I'm Davis Nguyen. I completed my fellowship with Dr. Kamer two years ago. Got this opportunity to come to Vietnam on the face-to-face -face mission, and I'm, I'm very excited. I'm with my buddy, Philip Young. This experience for us, as being the young guys, really helps us to see what we can do. Just being able to hang out with the big boys here and seeing what they've already done, it makes us want to keep doing this. It's not only fun, but it's also very gratifying. As somebody who is, um, live the American dream, which I have. It's so important for me to really remember where I came from. Being able to uh, learn from uh, so many talented surgeons um, gives us the opportunity to uh, hone our own skills because we're still very young in our careers. I'm Dr. Hodges from the University of Tennessee in Memphis, Tennessee. We're here in Saigon with the American Academy of Facial Plastic Reconstructive Surgery. Uh, having, we call it a mission. And we're here with Dr. Lee Hun uh, from Saigon, Chairman of the Department of Plastic Surgery at Shorey Hospital. I'm Frank Kamer. I'm a uh, facial plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, California. I'm here in hopes of uh, trying to give back a little to uh, the world that has been so good to me and uh, help teach the doctors and uh, operate on some people here in, uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. My colleague, uh, Bill Presswell is here uh, with our group of seven. I'm Dr. Steve Anderson. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I'm here with my good friend uh, and colleague, Dr. Billy Silver. He's from Atlanta. We have a pro bono committee called Face to Face for missions such as this where we teach. We're trying to reach out to the rest of the world. Um, it really is, is kind of an ambassadorial program, but it's a program where we're able to uh, show other people what we know and they're sharing with us as well. And it's absolutely a win-win situation. We always identify ourselves with a training institution where academic work is, is promoted and where we can train young residents and, and share with the experienced staff. Not only do you give information to people who are thirsty for it, but in giving it, and working with your colleagues, you learn a great deal. I feel it's a wonderful life that we've been given by what we've learned to do and have done in our own, uh, in our own backyards. And we certainly are on either side of the country. And it is time for us to, to return that which we can to people who need it, who need whatever skill that we have that we can do to make them look better, perhaps make them feel better, make them function better, and to teach their doctors to do the things that we can do. Our team that comes to various countries is a, a mixture of young surgeons and older, more experienced surgeons. And I give this message to a lot of the members at the academy, people who think that they're not good enough surgeons to come and teach. It's a great opportunity because we do know a lot, even though we may not think we do, and they do appreciate it. It's been a great uh, experience. Uh, working with uh, all these doctors that you read about in your textbooks and, and you hear about uh, all the accomplishments they've made. It's really a privilege to work with these uh, people. For me, this is like the defining moment in terms of contributing to society. You know, I thought that it was going to be more of the senior surgeons teaching the junior surgeons, and it, really there's a cross-fertilization there. The, Junior surgeons uh, have learned some things that maybe we haven't seen and we're sharing with them. And all the time the Vietnamese doctors are here uh, with their heads over the shoulders, scrubbing with us in surgery, uh, going to lectures, and they're learning a lot from, from both the, the, the junior and the senior surgeon. People are tremendously friendly with a great sense of humor and they truly seem to enjoy our presence here and, and, and to see what we have to do for them. The Vietnamese really stand out as being lovely, lovely people. 
the, the circumstances aren't always ideal because we do not have uh, the, the, the instruments that we need, but we bring some and we use some and we improvise some. Mm. It gives an opportunity for certain corporations to become involved with the face-to-face -face program. There is a need here for instruments and, and surgical supplies and for sophisticated equipment. The teaching hospital does not have as much products. We need to have more money coming in, more donations, so that uh, we would have the ability to come and practice medicine here like we do in America. Also on this particular trip, we were fortunate enough to have uh, W.L. Gore and Porex donate some uh, supplies for us to use here. And I think this is just the beginning. I think that there will be other corporations, not only that give us materials, but corporations that can actually donate funds uh, because it does share with the rest of the world their interest in helping others. If somebody hears this out there, uh, you're a corporate uh, citizen, uh, I hope that some of these things uh, strike a bell with you. Uh, we'd love to have support from the rest of the community. We're going to continue to do it whether we get the support or not, but the more support we have, the more we can do, the more trips we can do. and uh, so the more, the more people we can help. That's exactly right.